In this video, we're going to be giving an overview of Vertica and also explaining some of the terminology surrounding the architecture along the way. First of all, Vertica is a data warehouse and advanced analytics platform. It can handle structured, semi structured, and unstructured data. It can be deployed on premises, hybrid mode, as well as in the cloud. And in terms of advanced analytics, it can do things like in database machine learning and also has other features like geospatial analysis. For all the purposes of this video, I'll just be using the Vertica Community Edition. To access this, you can just log in up the top right of the page here. You can then request access for Vertica Community Edition. You then have to wait for the Vertica team to approve this. Once you've approved it, you can then download the configuration file from the website for whichever tool you're going to be using. Here I'm going to be using VMware. This is what Vertica will run on. Using the configuration file downloaded from the website. Before we get started, we can see here that we're working on a Linux operating system. It already comes prefigured with a link to the management console, which is one of the ways we can access Vertica. And it also has the user guide as well. Before we move on to the management console, we'll just discuss quickly three different ways that you can access Vertica. One is through this management console, and the next is by using admin tools on the command line. This will bring up a graphical interface. We can do this, and we can also cancel out with this, and then we can type in commands after admin tools. For example, here we can see that the database VMAT is up. These are the three the main ways you'll use to access Vertica and carry out commands. Firstly, I'll show the Management Console. Most of the content in this video will just be involved in this Management Console. As we can see here, this is the first page that it shows when we go into the, the Management Console. We've got three different options. We can create a new database. We can import a database. We've also got the import options. We can also manage our database as well. We've got one up and running with this Community Edition that's already pre-configured. And go into this and can just view our database. Start here on the overview page. You can see here we've got four different charts here. Got one involving queries, one for threshold notifications, pool usage, and how the CPU memory and disk is being used. At the top right of the screen here, we can see how each of the nodes are doing. We can see if there's any of them down. You can see how many is up as well as how many are critical and how many are recovering. You can also see here our mode that we're working in. Vertica has two different modes. It has an enterprise mode, which we're working in just now, and also has an Eon mode. I won't get into the details about each of them just now, but most of that information can be found on the website. You can then see queries that are running and that are queued. You can then see the number of projections in Vertica. In Vertica, rather than the data being stored in tables, it's actually stored down projections. Projections are really just collections of the table columns, and these can be optimized for different queries. For example, if I have a query that's ordered by a certain field or grouped by a certain field, Vertica may run the query using one of the projections that are already sorted by the field or that's already grouped by it. One of the projections you can use is the live aggregate projections, which basically just takes the anchor table and it has already grouped by a field. So if you had a query where you were grouping by one of the fields and the projection is also grouped by that same field, it would likely be a lot quicker just for Vertical to look at that projection rather than the original anchor table. There's five different types of projections. There's a super projection which contains all the columns in the anchor table, but the columns may be ordered or sorted differently. 
There's also query specific projections. These are for frequently run queries. What we basically do is we just feed these into Vertica and Vertica creates projections specialized for those queries. This is something we usually do back at the start when we're setting up Vertica. There's also top K projections where we have a limit clause and it's over a certain field. So if we're taking the limit five over, say for example, product ID, it will show five rows for each of the product IDs rather than just five rows overall from the data set. We also have the live aggregate projections, which I've just mentioned, where the projection is grouped by a certain field. Finally, we have projections with expressions. This is when we are combining two of the columns. We may be adding one column with another, and it'll be stored as a column in that projection rather than two separate columns in the anchor table. We can then create two more projection types by just combining either projection with expressions in the live aggregate projections or projections with expressions and top key projection. Before we go on to speak just a bit more about projections, there's a few more things we can view on this page. I won't get into too much detail here. Firstly, we'll move over to the design page. This is one of the things we can do when we first set up Vertica. And this is how we can create query specific projections. We can feed Vertica a collection of SQL files, which contain the commonly run queries, and it creates projections which will be optimized for those. We can choose two different design types. One's comprehensive, one's incremental. Comprehensive is the one that you generally use when you're first starting up your database, incremental will be used after you've used it for some time. Um, and by that point, you maybe have different queries that you want to be optimizing your database on, or the data that you're actually storing in your database has changed since you first set it up, meaning you have to actually optimize it again. You can then optimize for load, for performance, or balance, load, and performance. You can also set the case safety. Query specific projections can be created with the database designer, but other ones such as projections with expressions, live aggregate projections, and top K projections, those must be created manually. Meaning you would actually have to go in and create those yourself and create execution, for example, or command line, whatever it is you're actually creating your projections. If we now actually have a look at how we can run queries and how we can view the projection that the query is using. We can go to the query execution tab down the bottom here. Now that this is loaded up, we can just show one of the sample queries. We execute this query. You can see the query results in the first section. You can see the query plan in the second section and the query profile in the third. Because it's running less than one second, it doesn't actually generate for this query. <clears throat> but for the query plan, this tells us here which projection has been used. Here we can see this is a super projection, meaning that it's using one of the, the projections that contains all of the columns in the anchor table, but it may just be sorted differently or ordered differently. We can see which columns have been materialized and we can see the different operators that have been used to carry out the query also. This is one way to view the query plan. We can also, if we click on the side here, we can click explain before the command and this will, view us, this will show us in the query results section and it will list out here. So those are two different ways to view the query plans. The query profile shows how well a query runs, whereas the query plan shows us how it's actually running, like what steps it's actually carrying out to run the query. If we have a look at the query profile, we can just type profile before the query as well. In this case, it's not shown. When we just run the query itself, we can put profile before it, execute the query, and then see 
basically three different horizontal charts here and we can go through each of these different sections and we can do all the different statistics for that query execution. If we want to view the query plan or the query profile outside of this query execution window, we can also come over here to the query plan tab. We can then type a query in the section up here and we can choose which one we'd like to view. The final section I'll show in this video is just the settings. This is just a collection of different ways you can configure your database. You can see here we've got lots of different sections, some referring to the backups, some referring to security. Again, I'm not going into too much detail on the setting side of things, but this was mainly just to give an overview of Vertica in general, just to get a feel for the tool. I'll now move on to Vertica Academy, where you can actually go in yourself and take a bit of a deeper dive into each of the, the features of Vertica. Here we are on the Vertica Academy page. Here I'm on the Certifications tab. You can see we've got three different exams. We've got one which is the foundational exam. That's called Certified Professional Essentials 10. We've also got two expert exams here as well. If you didn't actually want to set one of the certifications, there's also smaller courses in the free online self-paced section. There's a whole host of different categories here that you can actually go in and have a deeper dive into. You can go through each of the different filters up at the top. You can look at the ones that are popular or the newest versions. This video hopefully gives you a good insight into what Vertica looks like and some of the terminologies. Of course, I recommend that you actually go in and do some of the courses yourself just to get a better understanding and hope you found this video useful.